on it with a spirit of expectation of what God has. Haven't you been enjoying the services here at Life Fellowship Church? I know I have. I know something down on the yes, something down on the inside of me has been stirred by Bishop Olu Lawrence, and I'm so grateful that he's here with us. And I know you're going to be fed tonight. And it's good to see our youth in here tonight. Y'all going to worship with us. The Lord reigns, doesn't he? He's still on the throne. Highs, lows, no matter what happens, God is still on the throne. Let's stand to our feet and let's worship him tonight. Hallelujah.
darkness truly trembles at his name. And we have the power and the authority in the name that is above every single name. And you know, even when we're wrestling, when we wrestle with life and its situations, we wrestle with our own emotions, we wrestle with our own circumstances. And I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I have a hard time being good. Do y'all? Y'all don't believe that, do you? I'm always good. No, but you know, I tell you what, there's times when that flesh rises up and makes war with the spirit. You know, the Bible says that the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And sometimes it's a wrestling match in, the, in that particular realm. But you know what? God reigns. And when you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, you no longer are subject to what your flesh desires, but you now can walk in the fruit and in the ways of the spirit. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful? Hallelujah. I'm like Bishop Holy Lord. I love the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love the Holy Ghost. And I love the light and the light that he brings to our lives. So tonight I can just see that he is on us tonight already. He's in our midst. I want you to give somebody a smile and a hug or a high five and just love on somebody today and tell them it's so good to see you in God's house. Amen.
church tonight. God, you're my everything. Without you, I am nothing. Without you, I am nothing. Oh, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. We magnify, we glorify. We magnify your name. seconds church sing from your heart sing from your heart
biggest praise you have in a long time right now with the loudest voice you can muster with a hallelujah praise the Lord and a hand clap come on do that right now would you come on bless his name bless his name bless his name praise the Lord you to uh, join hands with somebody next to you right now. Margaret, would you come up and uh, pray for us? Margaret, come on up and pray for us. Would you do that, darling? She's going to lift us up before the throne. However the Lord leads you to pray. Go right ahead. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight in the name that's above every name. We reverence you tonight for your presence in this place. We give you honor and glory. Father God, we thank you that your presence is right here with us. Have your way, sir, whichever way you choose tonight. Our heart is receptive, God, that we can receive what you have in store for us tonight. Thank you, God, for the messenger for the hour, God. Thank you for the move of your spirit, God. Thank you for the healing that's going to take place in this house. Thank you for deliverance that's going to take place for this house tonight. Father, we say, have your way in the name of Jesus. Everybody that believes that, say amen tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Before you're seated, go to somebody. I know you already have once, but go at least two people and tell somebody, God has something special for you tonight. Would you tell them, God has something special. Thank you, musicians. We'll pick up the rest of it. Hallelujah. Glory.
Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm glad that you're here tonight on this wonderful Wednesday night. Glad God is here. How many of you appreciate Brother Bishop Olu? How many of you love his ministry? We do too. I believe that we've made a friend, a deep friend in the spirit. And he's a wonderful man of God that I so appreciated hanging around. How many of you understand that what you permit to enter your life determines what exits your life? And I tell you what, when you permit the things of God, when you permit prayer, when you permit the word, when you permit the Holy Spirit to come in power and glory into your life and enter into your life, I'm here to tell you there's a whole lot of things that you don't want anymore in your life that will exit your life. And I'm telling you, I believe that there's some things that have been exiting people's life. I believe there's some wonderful things that God has uh, blessed us with that has been entering into our life. And... Um, this is the strangest thing I've ever done in 28 years. I can tell you that. He started a, a week ago Sunday, came again Wednesday, came again Sunday, he's here again Wednesday night. Someone's asked me, and people have been asking me, how long is he going to be here? I don't know. Till he's, he, till he's not here anymore. <laughs> I've had other people go, Pastor, you still have a job? After he's, he's been here a long time, you still going to have a job? <laughs> And I still got a job. Jesus is on the throne. I've got a job. And God is in charge of all that's going on right here, for sure. And uh, we're just allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate what we have sensed in our heart, what God is doing in this season of our church. He's been a tremendous blessing to me. If, as he comes to this pulpit tonight to get the most out of what God has for us, I'm here to tell you, when the man of God says, Shout, give it the best shout you've got. When he says clap, give it the best clap you got. He says run to this altar, I'd be the, you better be the first one down here. and Don't let anybody beat you. Run to this altar. Whatever the Holy Spirit says to you to do, through the man of God, I'm here to tell you, you do it. You're going to be blessed. Nobody prays as long as he does and things don't happen in the spirit. He's a praying man. He hears from God. And uh, I'm so appreciative of him being here tonight. Would you give Bishop Olu one more live fellowship welcome as he comes and ministers to us the word tonight. Somebody ought to praise him in the house tonight. Come on now. You ought to praise him because it's a good God tonight. Is he worthy? Worthy of all of our praise. Will you please stand up on your feet? Thank you. We bow down our heads as we rest in his arms tonight. Holy Spirit, thank you for understanding. Thank you for understanding our weaknesses. Thank you for understanding our slowness to uh, grasp everything that you want to reveal to us. Thank you so much for standing with us and standing by us. Thank you for your strength that nothing can destroy. Thank you for your anointing that breaks yokes. It destroys yokes. And tonight we are back into your presence. And we just thank you for your presence. Thank you for being ready to teach us tonight. Spirit of the living God, remove from us tonight whatever will not submit to the will of God. Remove from us tonight whatever will not submit to your authority. Remove from us tonight whatever will not Abide by your instructions in the name of Jesus. Remove from us tonight the spirit of misinterpretation, the spirit of misrepresentation, the spirit of ignorance. Be removed from us tonight the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of disobedience. Be removed from us tonight in the name of Jesus and deliver us from that darkness that cover our eyes. Remove from us tonight that covering cast that hinders our understanding. I ask tonight that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this house tonight, dear sweet spirit of the living God. And we want to tell you you are welcome and we recognize your presence in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of the Father is in the house tonight. And we thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Lamb of God, we receive you into this place tonight. You are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lamb of God is in the house tonight. And now that you are here, I ask that you touch everyone, including those that are at home right now. Lamb of God, touch each and everyone in the name of Jesus and draw us close to the everlasting fountain of life. This is Life Fellowship Church. I ask that you turn this place to a life fountain where when people come in, they will drink of your life in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. And at your hands, we change them forever and ever. Thank you, Father. Bless everyone tonight and reveal yourself to us. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church shall say, you may be seated. Tonight, we will open the Bible to see what the scripture have to say about the origin of Satan. As we are getting ready to pray and as we are already praying, it is very uh, good for us to learn how to pray effectively and the things that can be hindrance in your prayer life or in your journey with the Lord. And one of the things you should know is who is Satan? Where is he from? And what are his activities? What is Satan capable of doing to you? What is Satan capable of doing to our spiritual life? The Bible does not enter into any form of argument to prove who Satan is or to prove who God is. We know God by what God does. And the same way, the Bible did not enter into any argument as to the beginning of Satan or as the history of Satan before he became Satan. Boom, we woke up. Satan was right there. But the Bible reveals who he is. And that's for the consumption of those that wants to excel in the school of neology. The college of neology. That's the school of prayer. If you must excel in the school of prayer for the for the benefit of those that might confuse my terminologies, um, if you want to excel, if you want to go to the higher class, then you should know who you are dealing with at every point in time. Because ignorance is one of the weapons of Satan. He wants you to be ignorant. I'm sure you have heard people that probably say that they don't believe that there is Satan. That is exactly where Satan wants them to be. He wants you to be in the school of ignorance. And you have heard people say what you don't know don't hurt you. So all those terms is a lie. What you don't know could kill you. And hurt you. Not just hurt you, but terminate your life. So, but the enemy wants you to be ignorant as much as he can. He wants to keep you from knowing. Because the scripture says, ye shall know 
the truth. You shall know. You shall know. You shall know. And the truth that you know sets you free. Turn your Bibles tonight to Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, this is very important. I'll repeat myself again because we want to uh, dwell in the presence of God. We want to abide. We want to remain in the presence of God. But there is someone who vowed to make sure that you never stay in God's presence. He is angry with you because he is 100% evil. I repeat, Satan is 100% evil. And God is 100% a good God. Will you say amen like you don't believe that? If I said what I said that in some other places, the amen will almost throw the roof off. God is 100% a good God. Well, you can do better than that too. The Bible says, God is light. What does that mean? That means God is not trying to be light or come on when there is darkness. God, the embodiment of God is light. And we're told that in Him there is no darkness at all. Every part of God even the finger of God, the hand of God, the word of God, everything about God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. So, because He is 100% evil, 100% wicked, He manufactures wickedness every second. Is looking for the best way to destroy everyone that claim to be followers of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never come across anyone that hates you with a passion like Satan. Hear me tonight. If there is anyone you want to hate with a passion in your life, it's Satan. Because he hates you. He hates your guts. He hates everything about you. He might smile, but he's devilish. There is nothing about him that exalts God. There is nothing about him that magnifies God. There is nothing about him that loves you. Ezekiel 28. So, how did we just come up? Satan, where is he from? Where, who is he? Chapter 28, Ezekiel. Verse 12, verse 13. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The cider, sopas, and diamond, beryl, Onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your trimbrail and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub. Mark the word created. Satan was not born. He was created. But he was not created Satan. He was not created as evil. He chooses that part. Like many people chooses to be what they are. The Bible says God looked at what he created and behold, they were very good. Everything about what God creates were very good. There is nothing that is not good in what God made. But Satan chooses that part. Verse 14. You were the anointed cherub 
who covers, who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and fought in the midst of fairy stone. God is speaking. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Verse 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fairy stone. Verse 17. Your heart was lifted because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom. Look up, life fellowship. If you look at this scripture we just read, you see the perfection of God in the creation of Lucifer. He was the praise worship angel. And everything that he needed to praise God in the mount of God was imbued. I don't know if anybody is listening to me tonight. It was in him that whenever he comes to bless and worship God, everything is in Him. Look at uh, what it says in uh, uh, verse um, 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of fairy stone. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. He was created perfect. He was beautiful. He worked for God. He served the living God. Until iniquity, pride, was found in him. And God will not put up with anything unclean. The Bible says God is of a purer eye than to behold iniquity. So his heart was lifted up. But the book of Isaiah make it more clearer. Let's go to the book of Isaiah tonight, chapter 14, verse number 12. So he was perfect until iniquity was found in him. Iniquity is another word for Sin, evil. So, and God made a decision to separate from him. Chapter 14, verse 12, Isaiah. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to soil, to the lowest depth of the pit. If you read, when you read this place, say, I will, I will, I will. I want to be like the Most High. I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to be, be worshipped. I want, I want the earth, I want the uh, human being on earth to worship me too. Like they worship the almighty God. So I want to be, I want to be, I, 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 I. So the Bible says, God saw that iniquity has come to his heart. Evil has come to his heart. He wanted to overthrow God, in other words. He wanted to plan a coup, a coup d'etat, to unseat the Almighty. That is heavy. For anyone to conceive in his heart that I'm going to unseat the Almighty. I want to be worshipped. I want people to bow down to me. And so God made a decision to remove him quickly. <laughs> because he's a God of judgment. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight at the cross, 
cross was the beginning of the sorrow of Satan in your life. The cross. The cross was the beginning of sorrow for Satan. And the cross was the beginning of joy in your life. Because that was where his head was bruised. And so tonight, I want you to relax because I've already prayed for you. Everything you heard about Satan tonight is nothing. I mean, Satan is nothing to you. The last time I checked, it was supposed to be under your feet. Is this still there? I'm asking. I say, is this still under your feet? That's where it's supposed to be, right? So, he has right to know the size of your shoe. He doesn't have right to know the size of your shirt. It's under your feet, right? Or you're not hearing me tonight. I'd like you to talk back to me. I don't want you to keep quiet in the church. A living church is a noisy church. Do you agree with that? A noisy church is a shouting church. A shouting church is a revival church. A revival church is a miracle church. Come on somebody, give me some noise. So the church is not a graveyard where we have sanctimonious and satisfied saints. They don't talk to anyone. <laughs> they are very holy in the graveyard. So holy. So they don't talk to anyone and nobody disturb anybody. You mind your business and mind mine. But when we come to church, it's a place to celebrate him. Hallelujah. So I, I don't want you to fret tonight. I don't want you to think, oh, uh, he talks about Satan. Satan is going to come after me. Never. He has been defeated on the cross. And he know it. That's the good news. He knows that he was defeated on the cross. But the thing is, he don't want you to celebrate the defeat that he received. He doesn't want you to walk in it. He doesn't want you to, to, uh, uh, to know it. But pastor and I have decided that you are going to know it. And the Holy Spirit have decided that you are going to know it. So that when you come into the place of prayer, you know firsthand who your enemy is. Without a shadow of doubt, your enemy is not your neighbor. It's just being used. Your enemy is not your co-worker. He or she just being used. Your enemy is not your student in the school. They are just being used. Your enemy is not your friend. He's just being used. Somebody is using him or her against you. And you don't want to deal with symptoms of the matter. You want to go to the root of the matter. And the root of that matter is Lucifer. So you want to deal with him. I don't want you to pray amiss when you pray. Because you're going to be praying for a very long time. Because you're going to pray for the rest of your life. I don't know how many uh, years you're going to be here for. But I do know that you are going to clock 120 years. You didn't say amen. Or you want to go tonight? Well, if you, if you don't have much job to do, you are free to go. But for those that have lots of things to do for the kingdom, you are free to stay. Stay here and let's finish the job. Amen. So, I want you to know that when you come into the place of prayer, there, there is someone who is against you. And will do anything to make sure you don't pray. Distract you, discourage you, attack your mind, give you suggestions, say some things to you. We do anything because Satan is not afraid of an excellent sermon, but is scared of an excellent sermon backed with prayer. 
He's very scared. He is scared of the weakest person that is on his knees. He's scared. Why is he scared? Because you are calling on the Almighty. And he doesn't want you because he knows that when you call, God has promised God will come. And when God comes, his, the devil's work is disrupted. His works are being exposed when God comes. I told Brother Nathan, was it Monday or Tuesday morning, I said, your offense is this. The powers in Cannondale looked at you and said, you are the reason why this pastor is here. And because you brought him, we have not had rest. He has been disturbing our life. And we are going to deal with you. If you let them. So you don't let them deal with you. You put them on the defensive. That is how to deal with Satan. Before he attack, you attack. He might not even do anything wrong. He might not have done anything wrong. But for the fact that he is a devil, anytime you wake up in the middle of the night, in the morning, anytime, just attack. Satan, I hate you with a passion. Get out in the name of Jesus. You get to office early before everybody comes. You get an anointing oil and pray over the office. Every demon of rebellion in this office, I command you right now, get out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bring the children together before they go to bed. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of disobedience, I command you, you're not going to stay in this house. Get out in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you put him on the defensive. You slap him. Until he is nervous whenever you show up. Until he becomes afraid whenever he sees you. Because he doesn't know what, are you, what you're going to do. I didn't do anything. He slapped me. What if I do something? So he's nervous. Oh, here comes Jessica. And he's nervous because the devil don't know what you're going to do. You're going to say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he goes, what did I do? Oh, you don't have to do anything. I hate you with a passion. And wherever I go, wherever I am, I don't want you 100 yards, 100 feet to where I stand. I don't want you around there. So you are on the uh, offensive because he hates you with a passion. Hates you with a passion. In Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So he was created by God. And he was uh, called the son of the money. He ministered to God in worship. He was beautiful. He had perfect wisdom. He, 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 he was given that wisdom by God. God blessed him with that wisdom. And he had some angels under his authority that walked with him in the kingdom. And because of this privilege, the enemy now, Satan now said, Oh, I am going to uh, rise above the cloud. I will uh, build my throne. I I'm going to be like the Almighty. And everyone will worship me. And God decided, Satan, you are not even going to stay here. I am getting rid of you now. So what else should we know about this man? Let me show you in Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Whose mind 
Or well, look at verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who, who are perishing. Verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. What does that mean? That means the enemy blind the mind of people. They don't, it doesn't want them to experience the light and the power of the gospel so that they will be saved. He blind their mind. He attacked their mind. That's what he does in Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 9. So the great dragon, well, that's another word for him. Lucifer was his office name, his, his title, his office, when he was serving, son of the morning. But it's not bright and the morning star. The bright and the morning star is Jesus Christ. Amen. But Lucifer is son of the morning. So you understand the difference. Now, the Bible, the, 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 the word that was interpreted Satan or devil or evil or serpent, look at, is also interpreted as dragon. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast out, cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Look up. How many of you in this house tonight uh, think the devil is 100% stupid? I'm asking a question. How many of you in this house think that the Satan is 100% stupid? It's not, right? Is that what you are saying? It's not 100%. It's not 100% stupid. The Bible says he was given a perfect wisdom. God gave him wisdom. Perfect wisdom. He had ability given to him by God. And he had angel under his administration, under that works with him. And when he sinned against God, he was able to corrupt in the, in the Ezekiel, we read that you have corrupted your wisdom. But the wisdom was not taken from him. I don't know what I'm speaking tonight to the church. You, you, are you getting anything? The wisdom was not collected back from him. It was only corrupted. So he still had the wisdom, but... The pure wisdom has, not, has now been corrupted. What does that mean? That means he has ability and power to do evil. He does not have power to do right. Let me say to you tonight, the devil cannot kill and make a life. It's impossible. Everything that the wishes or wizards or, or all of them that works for Satan, whatever they destroy, they cannot make it good. This is the line between God and Satan. Jesus resurrected from the grave and he said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. All power. All power means there are a different power. There are, uh, the, 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 the power to kill, the power to make a life, the power to do evil, the power to do the right thing. It's only one that the devil has. He has power to destroy. He can never repair what he destroyed. But God has the power to kill and to make a life. Jesus said, 
fear him that is able to kill and make alive. Is able to destroy and repair. That is the complete power. And I'm glad to tell you tonight that it doesn't matter what is being destroyed in the foundation of your life. I know a man, a specialist, that you can talk to tonight and is going to fix it for you without charging you a penny in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody giving glory in the house. Whatever is being destroyed, he can fix it tonight. It doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter who destroyed it. He will fix it. Because he is the manufacturer of your life. And every duplicate, every, every uh, spare part of your life is in his hand. He has spare parts. Uh, he has spare liver, he has spare kidney, he has spare lungs, he has spare brain, he has spare of everything that you have because he made them and therefore he has spare parts in his glory. Somebody ought to praise him in the house tonight. The power of God is in the house right now. Everything is in his hand. He can do it again. He did it before and he'll do it again. So tonight, all glory be to the Lamb of God. And let no Satan rejoice for nothing. Because everything said in this place tonight, it is to expose his evil works so that the children of God can mount up with wings as eagle and be victorious in their prayer life. Come on, somebody give him glory in the house. This is the will of God concerning you. So he does not have power to make good what he destroyed. And on top of that, Jesus defeated him on the cross. So the Bible says he is the piercing serpent. He is the crooked serpent. He is the sea serpent. He is the, 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 the king of all children of pride. Job chapter 41. He is the king of the children of pride. I'm going to warn you tonight. And the warning is this. Never you underestimate what Satan can do. I repeat. Do not underestimate his ability to do evil. He has power to do evil, ladies and gentlemen. But, there is power over his power. Oh yes, Jesus Christ has the power. So, you must believe in the power of Jesus to destroy every works of Satan, regardless where they showed up. In Job chapter 41 verse 34, he beholds every high thing. He is the king over all the children of pride. Lucifer is the king. He is the king of the world of darkness. In the book of John, Jesus said, The prince of this world comes, but I have nothing in me. He is a prince. Jesus give us straight the office or the stature, the statue of Satan in the world, in the evil world. He is the prince of the world of wickedness. What is the meaning of the word prince? Prince means Someone who is first on the throne. So Satan is first on the throne of wickedness. Did I lose you? You are with me. Stay with me. You're gonna be you're gonna be glad that you did. Is the is the first on the throne of evil. Is the first on the throne of wickedness. 
Everything about him is wickedness. Let me tell you what happened. When God threw him out, look at the book of Revelation. God actually threw him out. And, but before he was thrown out, there was war. There was a big time war in heaven. Before he was thrown out. Look at verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Glory. The accuser of the brethren. What does he accuse you of? He accuses you every day. Say, look at her. She's singing in the choir. She's, she's into praise and worship. And she just calls somebody. She just calls someone on the phone. She just calls her husband. She just calls her children. She, he accuses you. You remember Job? And Satan showed up. And God said, what's up? He said, I'm just going everywhere. He has no address. He goes to and fro. He doesn't have address. And God's, God was bragging. Did you see my servant Job? Since you are going everywhere. Hey, I saw him. You are the one blessing him. Are you not the one blessing him? You bless him. If you take all those blessings, it's going to cost you. He wants to set Job up. That's what he does. He accused the church. He accused your mind. All the things you have done 20 years, 30 years, 40 years back, he accused you. The one you did last year is accusing you. And you couldn't forgive yourself every time you remember, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. Ladies and gentlemen, the blood of the Lamb has covered your past. And therefore, let no devil accuse you in this house. Somebody give him glory in the house. The blood of the Lamb. So when next the devil accuses your mind, tell him, the blood has covered my sin. The blood has covered my iniquity. Let me tell you the truth about that. The devil does not like to hear the blood. It reminds him of his devastation. It reminds him, it reminds him of the defeat. It reminds him of his agony, his pain. Whenever he hears the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the words of their testimony. He was cast out. Oh yes, he was rejected. And look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Now you will overcome in the place of prayer. If you know that you are victorious by the blood of the Lamb. You know how to use the weapon of the blood. You know how to use the weapon of the word. You know how to use the weapon of the name of Jesus. The name, the word, the blood. The name, the word, the blood. This is your firepower. Don't forget it. In the car, have your uh, gun loaded. You are free to carry a loaded weapon of the spirit's realm in your car, says the bishop. Because you are a militant soldier. Because you are on the offensive. You can grab it anytime and fire back. Satan, in the name that is above every name, get out of this traffic light now. In the name of Jesus. Satan, get out of my car. In the name of Jesus, the last time I checked, my name is on the title. 
and, uh, and Jesus bought this car for me, you cannot have a right. Says me. Understand, life fellowship, you cannot beg Satan. It does not understand the begging language. What he understands is a command. Satan, get out of that place now. In the name of Jesus. Can you say that? I was preaching somewhere and I asked the people, Jesus said, You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I said, come and pray. You come and pray for someone. And she was praying and said, Satan, uh, you, you, you don't have to stay here. You should not stay here. And it was so passionate the way she speaks. And I pity, I pity her in my mind because obviously she's not from my school. And she needs to attend my class. Because you don't talk to an enemy like that, do you? You don't speak to an enemy like you are so passionate and you show you are full of love. You don't full of love to Satan, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even try that. He looked confused, but he's not confused. He knows what he's looking for. He wants the precious life that you have. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say that? Say that, let me hear you. It looks like you are a graduate from my school, don't you? You know how to say that. I was preaching in Jasper, Texas, and after finishing, one brother told me, he said, you know, you don't pray like we pray. I said, how do you pray? He said, we pray and say, oh Lord, will you please heal this cancer? Let this cancer go away in the name of Jesus. If it pleases you, will you let this cancer go away? He said, you just take cancer Cancer, die in the name of Jesus. I said, because that's the language the devil understands. Understand that in everywhere you go, there is a language you must use. If you know the right language to speak, wherever you go, the door will be open for you. Many times the door is not open because folks don't know the right word to use. So when you are dealing with the enemy of the cross, the one that pulled trouble with God. The one that said, come, almighty, we're going to fight. And mobilize the angels to fight with God. So, what do you do? He wants to fight God and you, you are just, uh, he's going to just put you out of the place. You should be, uh, you should be very conscious that this person who determined to overthrow God is ready to is ready to hurt you just like that don't be distracted by that don't 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 don't, don't even don't even pay attention to that tonight you are victorious all i care tonight is next time you come into the place of prayer you know exactly what the deal is you know exactly who don't like you, who wants you to be destroyed, who wants you to be dead, who wants you to be killed is Lucifer. And you are not going to give in. And he will come with all kinds of tricks. Whenever it's time to pray, here they come. Uh, 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 you want to go to the kitchen, you want to do the dishes, you want to do this, you want to do that. Because of prayer, hell break loose. I'm sure you've been there, you've been in that, that place that, oh, I'm going to pray. And the moment you want to pray, and the children crying, 
and something happening and this happening and that happening and now you say oh i'll pray tomorrow tomorrow comes something has happened oh i pray next tomorrow something has happened you need to stand up and say hear me it is hour of prayer and i'm going to pray you stand on your feet and declare that i'm going to do just what i'm supposed to do in the name of jesus christ so tonight paul in the book of ephesians advised us that we must put on the whole armor we'll be back on sunday i'll show you on sunday how jesus dealt with demons because when I preach in places, I let people know that I don't want you to be afraid because I heard that people are afraid of Satan. Not in life fellowship. Am I right? I know I'm right. You know how I know? God used him to open the door for me to come. And God know me. He doesn't know me. So for God to have used him to open the door for me to come is because I know that this place is not a place that the people are afraid of demons. You know and you believe it's under your feet. And that's what we deal with on Sunday. Because you will pray. If you don't pray, you die. What is prayer? Prayer is the greatest privilege of Christian. Through prayer, our life, our service, and every being are put in touch with God. Prayer is more than an act. It is an attitude. Prayer is asking and receiving from God. Prayer is the conversation of the soul with God. Prayer is the channel of blessing and the channel of power. Prayer is reasoning with God. Prayer is taking hold of God's strength and witness His power in action. Prayer is spreading out my helplessness in the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ before the eye of a loving Heavenly Father. Prayer is my spirit panting after God. Prayer is spiritual dialogue with God. Prayer is standing in His presence. Prayer is a spiritual dynamite. It produces divine leverage. By prayer, my need is connected with the spiritual storehouse. Prayer is the road to tranquility and strength of soul. Prayer leaves me with self-control, poise, and calmness of mind and spirit in the most trying time. As a living church, you will have to pray. If you don't pray, you are playing. And God has no time. Look at me, church. God is too busy. He has no time to play. That's the, that's my, that's the way I see Him. He has to attend to every of His children all over the world. Why do I pray at night? I pray at night because in my own mind, God is busy during the daytime. Maybe I'm right. I don't know. So, where, and I'm short in stature. I'm not tall like Nathan or some of you. So, I want to sneak into his presence when, he's, when everybody is sleeping and say, Dad, I know you are less busy. Can we talk? So I sneak into his presence in the middle of the night when the whole of Canada is sleeping and the whole of Dallas is sleeping. I want to get his attention. I want to get best of his attention. I want to talk with him. I want him to talk with me. I want to pour my heart out. I want to cry. Last night you should have been here. I cry some and shout some and tears flowing all over the place over there because that is the moment to let go, to release everything into his hands. And he understands the meaning of my tears. He, I, I believe he sent an angel to collect my tears because he only can interpret your tears in the midnight hour. 
He knows what you are crying about. He knows that hour that you cannot pray and you are just sobbing, you are sobbing, you are sobbing, you are mourning. It is this practice of prayer that will mature into worship. And from worship into intercession. Some people say they are intercessors. It's God coming to intercede. Well, but they don't, they don't intercede. Real intercessor is when you come into his presence, you flow into intercession. Before you start interceding, you don't even know it. You forgot about yourself, not deliberately, but whenever you come into his presence, you have grown to that level that your spirit just automatically click in to that realm of intercession. And you, see, you find yourself interceding even for things you have no idea about. You find yourself worshipping him. So I, I, I come when I think everybody is sleeping because I have issues to let him, to let him hear about. I, I want to report you to him. Let me make it clear. So when I come, I report you. I report to him what you did on Sunday. I report to him what everybody said to me. I report to him every one of you in life fellowship. <laughs> That's good. It's a good report. I pray for you, in other words. I pray for the praise of worship. Oh, I don't know that sister's name, but Lord, that sister, you know her name. That lady, you know her name. Bless her, whatever she is. Touch her, whatever she is. And bless that brother that played the guitar. Bless that brother that played the keyboard. I don't know their name, but I report you to the Almighty God to touch you while you are sleeping. To bless you on your way out. To send his angel to a camp round about you. Wherever you are. So we're going to pray. But then we must learn that there is someone who doesn't really care about your prayer. He doesn't want you to pray. Period. And his name is Lucifer. Before I let you go home. Because you don't look like you want to go home. But I'm going to let you go home. <laughs> Luke chapter 13. Let me show you what Satan is capable of doing. Look. Well, the book of Luke means you should look. Because when you look, you are going to see. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Listen, you don't want me to stay here for too long. You know the reason why? I am not a good pastor. <laughs> You probably throw me out. I'm not a good pastor at all. You don't want the pastor in me to come out. Just enjoy this, this very one you are seeing now. I was preaching in Italy and everybody was running around the church for no reason. Well, I wasn't preaching that. I was just sitting down. People moving around the church for no reason. They just get up from their seat. Everywhere was rowdy. And I speak to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what are we doing here? Then when I, when I was introduced, and they still keep moving, when I, because anytime I have this microphone, I'm the boss. I know that. When I drop it, then I'm no more. Then I said, we're going to set some rule in this house. My name is Olu Lawrence, for those of you that don't know me. And I, I please don't want you to stand up from your seat unless you have to. I understand that. But if you don't have to, please sit down. When they were silent, the way you were silent, it's like, who in the world does he think he is? <laughs> I was preaching. You need to see the first time I preach in America. Because I didn't know the culture. I was preaching. On a Wednesday night, a lady picked her up her purse and she was walking out the door. I don't know any better. I told the usher, tell her to come back. <laughs> but hear this. 
she came back swelling up. Who in the world does he think he is? Telling me to come back to church. She was angry. Mad. She sat down. She didn't say anything. And the pastor's wife was like, yes. Somebody got to tell them at some point. They've been walking on my husband like that. Praise God, this guy came from Nigeria. He's not going to take that. So after service, the pastor's wife told me, say, you did it. I said, what? I said, my husband will never do that. They've been doing that all the time. They just go, walk away. But that lady became my best friend every time I go to the church. You know what she told me afterwards? She said she has never seen anyone in her life that released such authority on her. When I was going to Nigeria, she went everywhere, bought everything, and just blessed me. She said she has never seen a strong male around her. I said, maybe what I did was good. And I didn't do it because I want to do it. I did that because I don't know the culture. I probably won't do that now. I'll let you go. You want to go? Fine. So in Italy, they were running around. I said, well, let's set some rules. Sit down. You come to church, didn't you? They said, yeah. Sit down. After service, you know what the pastor told me? The pastor said, and the people sat down until you finish. How, what did you, how did you do that? I said, I didn't do anything. I simply told them to sit down. <laughs> and they sat down. I love you. I love you all. Nothing you can do about that. Luke chapter 13. Look at Luke. I'm going to let you go home because you are laughing like you don't want to go home. Amen. I'm glad that you are not a member of Paul's church. Paul will say, finally my brethren. And the next chapter he say, just like I told you before, I say it again. Therefore, it starts all over again. I'm not going to do that tonight. <laughs> Luke chapter 13 verse 10 are you there? okay you can see from the screen All right. now he was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no, no way raise her, herself up but when Jesus saw her he called her to him and said to her woman you are loose from your infirmity. Look at verse, verse 16. So ought not this woman be being a daughter of Abraham, whom, who bound her? Whom Satan had bound. Think of it. For 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Look up life fellowship. Satan bound her. 18 years. Yes. I told you he's wicked. 100%. Wickedness run through him. Because God drove him away. He vowed that everyone that wants to serve God, they're going to do like this. They're going to sweat it out. I will make sure that they are frustrated. I will hinder them. I will discourage them. I will attack them. And that's why some people, they said, before I came to church, I was fine. Now that I came to church, hell broke loose. Car broke down. Refrigerator stopped working. The air condition broke down. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Get up and tell the devil to get out of your house. Are you hearing me? Walk around that building and say, Satan, you are fighting a lost battle. As far as I'm concerned, I am not turning back from Jesus. And you are a loser. I am not a loser. Get out of my house now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody praise him in the house. 
When the enemy beats you down and wants you to cry and regret of your coming to the cross, I want your spirit to be encouraged like David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He got up and he said, Lord, what should I do? And God said, pursue them and you will surely overtake them and recover everything that was stolen. And David got up and chased after the enemy. And he brought back everything. Somebody give him praise in the house. When I was growing up and you go to school in Africa. And your, your friends in school beat you. And you cry. And cry to the house. If my father sees you. That you cry because your friend beat you up in the school. The next morning, you are going to dress up. He's going to follow you to the school. And you are going to show him which of your, the children in your class beat you up. And after you point, they say, that one. My father will say, beat him now. So two of you are going to fight right then and there. And my father will say, I did not father a stupid. And then you will fight until you beat that fellow. And then after that, he said, that's my boy. And I believe that's what God is saying. I did not raise a child that will run away in the face of temptation. I did not raise a brother, a son that will run away when the enemy make a scratch on your door. When the devil knock your door. When the devil touch your car. When the devil touch your children. When the devil touch your finance. When the devil touch any part of your life. I did not give birth to you to run away from him. Stand up on your feet and say, Lucifer, I am closing my eyes. By the time I open my eyes... I want to see your back running away from this place. In the name of Jesus. That is it. The devil will think again. If he has to come close to you. God wants you to be an atomic weapon. Yes. Wherever Satan is. He bound the woman for 18 years. 18 years. Spirit of infirmity. Not every sickness is sickness. They are infirmity. I can pray for you or anybody can say be healed. No. That spirit must be rebuked. When people go to doctor, spiritual sickness is being injected into the spirit realm of an individual when you are sleeping. In the book of Matthew 23, Jesus was asked, Who did this? Jesus said, The enemy did this. When men slept, he planted evil among the good seed. When you sleep, your spirit doesn't sleep. Spirit does not sleep. And the enemy play on the fact that you don't understand. Your spirit is not covered by the blood of the Lamb. For those that are not in Christ, you pity them. Because their spirit is not soaked in the blood. They are not regenerated. So the enemy evoke their spirit. And how does that happen? Is word. There is power in your word. Somebody told me some time ago that my, one of my son is disobedient to the mom and talk back to the dad. And I laughed. He called me on the phone. I said, well, by 2 a.m., go to the room where your boy is sleeping and call his spirit out. <laughs> Say to him, the spirit of Isaac I want to talk to you. Come out in the name of Jesus. There is power in your word. Word. Just word. And then you will see the spirit come up. You might not see the spirit with your physical eye. But you, you will know there is a stranger. There is a presence with you. And even if you don't know. 
Speak to that spirit. And say, I command you, spirit of disobedience, loose my boy in the name of Jesus. I release spirit of obedience upon you right now. Now enter into the body in Jesus' name. Close the door, go back to sleep. And he did it. Two weeks, he gave me a call. He said, Bishop, it's working. I said, I know. The authority of word. Word. There is power in your word. <laughs> in your word. When you see cloud, we were inside car. I was returning from Jasper and it was getting cloudy in the area of Houston. Like a storm was coming. And we spoke to that cloud. You cloud dissolve in the name of Jesus. And the person taking me back was still driving. And all of a sudden, in another five, ten minutes, the cloud just scatter. And there was no storm. There's power in your word. Use it. Not negatively, but, but positively. I bless myself. I bless my soul. I am a child of the living God. I am more than conqueror. I am victorious. I overcome every plan of the enemy. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am successful in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer in the name of Jesus. You bless yourself. You talk to yourself. You put a good spell on yourself. How does the enemy put spell on people? By word. A put spell of discouragement. A put spell of death. It's by word. And you have the same power. We see on Sunday in the word of God. What, how Jesus wants you to deal with it. Let I'll show you on Sunday what happened to the sickness of Job. Why everybody did everything they could and Job was not healed. Because that thing was an infirmity. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. I show you in the word of God how Job got victory. And this house will never be the same again. And you all will never be the same again. Stand up on your feet tonight because you don't look like you want to go home. <laughs> are you ready to pray? Hey, answer me back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me, Heavenly Father, I give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. I receive the victory of the cross in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. And tonight, I ask every walks, every activity of Satan in my life, I command you, come out in the name of Jesus. Every activity of the enemy in my home I command you come out in the name of Jesus every lies of demons every lies that Satan have told me I destroyed it by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus every affliction of Satan in my life I destroyed it by the blood of Jesus. You spirit of infirmity. I command you right now. Loose my body. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of oppression. Loose my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on somebody praise him in the house. Hear me, church. If you don't speak out, you are not helping yourself and you are not helping me. Speak it out. With the mouth, confession is made. 
When you go to the courthouse to be a witness, you have to speak out. So when you come to church, speak out. When you become a member of a cause, you have to speak out to accept their covenant before you can be a member. They will not see you as a member until you recite what they ask you to say. So when you come into the presence of God, learn to speak. God doesn't have time. He's busy. In my own word. So say what you want. Lord, touch my body. Lord, heal my body. Lord, set me free. In the name of Jesus. Then you mean business. It remind me of that man that was blind. He was blind, begging for money, and all of a sudden, he heard people. He wasn't deaf. He was only blind. Jesus was in Jerusalem. You know what he did? He doesn't know the direction. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He doesn't know the direction, but he heard. He opened his mouth and speak out. And the people said, shut up, my friend. He's not here for you. What do you think? What, what, Jesus is not very here for you. Okay. The guy. Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me! And Jesus too. Because he make noise. It's a noisy world, right? You have to tell everybody you are here. And Jesus said, Let him come. Yes. And he came. What do you want? Jesus saw that he was blind. But Jesus said, what do you want? That I may receive my sight to you according to your faith. Boom! Miracle took place. Tonight, you will never be the same again. Say after me. Say after me. Heavenly Father, I receive the victory of the cross in the name of Jesus. Empower me to pray. Help me to pray by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I defeat the works of the enemy by the blood of the Lamb of God. I defeat every attack on my mind by the blood of the Lamb. I defeat every infirmity in my body right now. You spirit of infirmity, I curse you with a curse and I command you get out of my shoulder, get out of my head, get out of my body. In the name of Jesus, somebody praise him in the house. Say after me, every satanic foundation in my life, I break you into pieces. In the name of Jesus, every foundation of oppression in my life, be broken right now in the name of Jesus you foundation of tiredness and weakness and confusion and ignorance I command you be broken in the name of Jesus evil foundation be broken evil foundation be broken out of my home out of my life in the name of Jesus Evil foundation. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Say after me, I establish the law of the kingdom of God over me. In the name of Jesus, I establish the law of Christ 
in my home, in my life, in the name of Jesus, I establish the law of righteousness upon my life. In the name of Jesus, I establish the law of prosperity, the law of abundance upon my life. In the name of Jesus, I establish the law of grace upon my life. In the name of Jesus, I destroy the law of death by the blood of Jesus. I destroy the law of death by the blood of Jesus. I destroy the law of sicknesses and diseases. In the name of Jesus, I establish the law of good health in the name of Jesus. Every day of my life, I am healthy, I'm strong, I'm victorious. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. Somebody give him praise in the house. I may be glad you didn't get the microphone after all that. Come on, give the Lord one more praise tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Satan has been defeated. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise and loud. Because the enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise and loud. Because the enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise and loud. One more time. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise and loud. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up.
Now let's do it right now. Let's shout one more time with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you, how many of you are glad that when God raised Jesus from the dead, he set him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that you can name and put all things under his feet. And how many of you are so glad when you got saved that Jesus set you together with him in the heavenly places? So how many of you are thankful that if everything is under his feet, how many of you know everything is underneath your feet? You're not on the bottom looking up. You're at the top looking down. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to prepare an offering right now. If you just be seated for just a second. And we're going to, I would like this. Um, Bishop spoke a word of prosperity over us in abundance and debt freeness. And, and uh, when he was doing that, I believe it was, Sunday morning, maybe it was. I just felt an anointing upon him, and we're just going to receive one offering today. If you put it in the offering envelope and put whatever you have to give to the church in the church, whatever offering you have to give to the bishop, uh, if it's cash, just mark it. It's on there. Just mark it, and, and you'll be able to mark it. Uh, and just designate it, if you will. And. Uh, Maybe you appreciate this good word tonight. I tell you what, we got so much, we're going to digest it all week and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal all that was shared in just one night. I can't wait for Sunday morning, can you? My goodness. While you're preparing that, I just want to give you real quickly, October the 30th, Lord willing, we're going to have Cowboy Day here. It's going to be a time of reaching out to our community. We're going to have a great time. And uh, we're going to believe God for great things to happen on that day. Uh, there's a yard sale the day before that, October the 27th. Raise the money for the Kenya mission trip. Bring, bring something out of your closet. Bring that day. Get a hold of uh, Margaret. I'll fill you in all the information. And uh, if you need any help in understanding that, bring, you can bring it on Friday. Set it up. And then Saturday we're going to start it. Uh, the next day so you can bring it on Friday the 26th and then ready for the yard sale on the 27th live connection class will be October the 20th don't forget that Lord willing mark that down if you haven't signed up sign up going to learn all about the vision of live fellowship where we're going what we're about also the men's breakfast has been moved from this Saturday we're moving it back one Saturday so it'll be the following Saturday so men's breakfast will not be this Saturday it will be the next Saturday this coming Sunday morning, we're going to have Holy Ghost, Devil Chasing, Foot Stomping, Hand Clapping services. Amen. There's no reason after all we've been experiencing for the enemy to be anywhere around you, your family, your children, your finances, anything about your life. There's no reason for the enemy to be anywhere around it. Amen to God. I said amen to God. We're running him off on down the road. Everybody ready to give? Say amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I know uh, I got, let's do this. Ushers, come up here and move this uh, pulpit over if you would. I tell you, just turn it around and uh, tell you what let's do. Move it, move it over there. And I want us, everybody to put it right here. Uh, Beverly, give me your Bible if you would. Amen. Thank you, ushers. You all did a great job. Y'all stand right over there in just a moment. You can collect it, all right? I want you to, they're, they're trying to follow my orders. They're, they're just, they're doing good. Bishop, if you come forward and, and place right here, and, and if you will put your offering, we're going to sing that song again, The Enemy's Defeated. And as you put your offering on, just let the bishop plead the blood, speak whatever he wants to over your family, over your life, uh, over your finances, for blessing and prosperity in your life. Amen? Everybody ready to give? Kids, y'all give something. I dare you. Watch God bless your life. Even from, from you, bless your life. You'll see him prosper you and bless you as you be obedient to God.
if all you have is a dime, I, you know, if, all you're, if, you, if you're down to your last dime, you might as well give it to God. Amen? <laughs> give something, everybody. Make it 100%. And let this man of God bless you and speak over you as you come. And wrapping your faith around the seed that you're sowing tonight. It's a biblical principle. You've heard me teach on it. Wrap your faith around the seed that you're sowing tonight. And agree with the man of God as he speaks over your life. And we're declaring the enemy is defeated over our life. For this purpose, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in Life Fellowship Church. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of us, your people tonight. We love you. We bless you. Receive all the glory and re all the honor in Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Come with your seed and place it on the Bible. Let the men of God bless you. of agreement remember when we agree together on earth and declare a thing it shall be done father under this apostolic anointing I declare that everyone that has brought you an offering tonight they will never lack in the name of Jesus I declare abundance upon their home I declare abundance up, upon their uh, purses. I declare abundance upon their children. I declare abundance upon their businesses. I declare abundance upon their job. In the name of Jesus. It is your will that they be blessed. And every tight financial, any, anything that causes financial tightness in their life with this seed I command that tightness to be loosed. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever causes financial tightness, financial frustration, lack, I command that to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus. With this seed, I declare your prosperity. With this seed, I declare your abundance. In the name of Jesus. And you will never lack. Not another day. Of your life. In the name of Jesus. Because you have obeyed the pastor. You have obeyed the man of God. And you brought your seed. May this seed. Bring 100% harvest. A thousand fold harvest. In the name of Jesus. Father thank you so much for the door of 
abundance that you have opened for this ministry, for this church, Life Fellowship, as a church, that this church will never, never lack. And not just that alone, everything that money do, everything that money should do, everything that money ought to do, everything that money ought to pay off, I ask for that miracle right now in the name of Jesus. I declare pay off of everything in this church in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Come on. Somebody, if you agree with that, come on. Come on. Thank you, Father. Pay off. Pay off. As a matter of fact, open your eyes. I see that done. I see that done right now. I didn't feel it. I see it done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When he preached earlier today, um, a while ago, and he declared over debt to be broken, I saw the picture of this church in my mind flash just instantly. I believe the Lord put it there for this debt to be completely removed. Then when he said it just now, I just set myself in agreement with those words in the name of Jesus, as well as over your house. Amen. I love you, church. Good morning, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, Sunday school, 10 o'clock. We're going to have Holy Ghost service. Amen. Come with expectation. Come ready to receive all that God has for you. Be dismissed in the name of Jesus tonight. Somebody shake the bishop's hand and give him a hug and tell him you love him, okay? Don't let him leave without about five or six of you hugging his neck.